This is a course at Washington University on applications of deep neural networks. This course is de delivered in a hybrid form where you come in four times during the semester and then the rest of it is asynchronous videos like this one that you watch. I put all of these on to YouTube as well as the internal Washington University Kaltura system with Canvas. So if you're a student from this, this is just the introductory overview of the course to talk about this. We'll talk about the specifics of submitting assignments and all of that on the first night of class, which is listed on the syllabus. So for this course, you'll see that everything is on a GitHub repository. I have links to it from Kaltura, where the videos are, and then also from Canvas where you'll submit assignments and you'll also use a auto submitter that I've created that checks your assignments for you and lets you know if everything's okay before you get the final actual grade on that. Obviously that's not available just on, on the internet. That is students of WashU only. So this is the syllabus for the entire course. We use PyTorch, which really I started this using TensorFlow, if you're familiar with it as well. PyTorch really does seem to be where it's at these days in terms of if you're going to do direct neural network development. Now, if you're using generative AI, large language models, these kind of things, you'll probably be using PyTorch at the lower level or, or something else. You may not even be aware. It may be cloud-based. I have another course here at Washington University. There's a link to it on the GitHub repository, but that is for generative AI. So if you're more interested in generative AI, you may want to take a look at that course. Uh, a number of students take, take both, sometimes even simultaneously. Some of the things that we cover in this course is just Python preliminaries. Just want to get everybody up to speed. I really assume that you've already done Python before, but if you haven't, I do cover some of the key things with the Python programming language that you need for this course, really for both, both of the two courses. Then some of the specifics of Python for machine learning, and then we get right into PyTorch for neural networks. PyTorch really is more of a linear algebra package. It does have a lot of neural network specific things in there, but you can take on really any sort of linear algebra sort of problem with it as well. And I show you how to plot a Mandelbrot set with it. And I have a number of examples showing that and how to uh, how to do rendering and some of these other things that, that you can do really fast with using a GPU because you'll be making use of GPUs in, in this course. We'll talk more about how you use a GPU in just a moment and what the expectations are there. We deal with tra tabular data. Now tabular data is not the most interesting thing for deep neural networks. They can do it. Tabular data is data that fits into Microsoft Excel really well. You'll probably have one column that you're trying to predict. The rest of the columns help you uh, predict that as well. This is very much the area that classic statistics and other models like gradient boosting, even, I mean, support ve vector machines and uh, even GLMs do do this really, really quite well. And GLMs are a very, very area that that uh, we that we deal with as well. I work in the uh, life insurance industry, so we definitely make use of GLMs, generalized linear models. After tabular data, then we jump right into computer vision and never look back. So convolution neural networks, not cable news network, and computer vision, these, this lets the neural networks be able to identify images that you give it. Uh, we'll also see how to find like facial features and, and things like that. We'll see, we do some generative AI, and here we'll get into image generative networks so we can see how to generate images such as faces, style GAN, we'll see. We'll get into stable diffusion and other things like, like that. We get a lot deeper into that in the generative AI class. Kaggle is a way that you basically use, it's, it's like Super Bowl for, or uh, World Cup, if you prefer, for data scientists. And we have a Kaggle competition. I always generate a brand new data set and let the teams compete to see 
which students are going to be going to get the, t the top models on those. We do some facial recognition where we use models that can detect eyes and nose and mouth and other things in, in the faces. These are the basics of how some of the chat applications have the ability to transform your face or put glasses on you or make you look like, I don't know, a chipmunk or some other form of animal. Lots of neat things there. We get into time series. This is, again, an area that there possibly are better alternatives than deep neural networks for time series. Although the transformer, which is the, the basics of natural language processing, it certainly has uh, has opened up some things for, for time series and natural language processing as well. This is largely the domain of generative AI at this point, but I will show you some of the non-large language model sort of embeddings and other things here. We will get briefly into large language models, but the other course gets much, much deeper into that. And then we get into uh, deployment and monitoring and also reinforcement learning, which is teaching it how to play game-like activities where it takes a series of steps. Let's go ahead and review some of the information from module one. You'll see these are all in modules. And these modules, the first 10 of them have assignments that go with them. You can see the assignments hyperlinked here. And then the Kaggle is about midway through and then there's final paper at the end. So let me go ahead and open up module one. If you click on any of these, you'll see the modules and you'll see part one, two through five. I've broken each of these into one through five. I try to keep the videos around in the, I don't know, the seven to 15 minute range, similar consumption size to, to a typical YouTube video. And then you have kind of all of these here. Often the fifth one, gives a bigger sort of application of the knowledge that we learned in the first four. You can see there's a badge at the top of each of these. I recommend going into this because some of the information just doesn't render properly in GitHub. Right now, you'll see that you are in GitHub. Go ahead and um, if you click that, you'll go into Google Colab. And this is an environment where you can actually run things. You can't run things in GitHub. You'll see I am in uh, Colab Pro Plus. There are several levels that you can purchase Colab at. I don't require you to purchase any of them. The free version should be entirely everything that you need. You do have the ability to use GPUs for this. Most of the, most of what you're working on will not require GPU. It'll just go a little bit slower. So like if you go to runtime and then change runtime type, this is what it looks like for pro. It looks a little different for, uh, you won't have as many options. You'll probably just have one GPU available. And these, these are diff different versions of GPU that have different, you get a certain number of credits. Uh, I'll, I have a video that shows an overview of the, of the pro plan, but that's basically, basically it. Most of what you can do it on the CPU, all the assignments require only a CPU. So now we're here. So you can start to run the code cells and you can even edit them. Like, I don't know, I could put in print hello world and I could run this and it's going to actually run that. Now, when you run it, it's going to say this notebook is not authored by Google. It's authored by me. So I, I trust it. I trust myself usually. So this is running this first part. This first part maps your, your uh, G drive so that you can copy files there if need be. We'll see that that becomes important as we get into the assignments and other things. But you can modify this code and I suggest you modify the code. That's often the best way to learn about it. So deep learning, this is neural networks and we've had neural networks for a long, long time. Neural networks completely fell out of grace when I I've done AI a long, long time, but I remember when I was first getting into it, neural networks were not thought a lot of you would, I mean, support vector machines were kind of the, the model to rule them all or just classic stats. The, the, uh, GLM, if, if you know how to properly deal with, with sampling and combining multiple models together. A lot of the stats that sometimes get over overlooked or, or ignored by, by well-meaning data scientists that, that haven't gone as deep into, into statistics, but then all of a sudden neural networks came back and these four individuals were really the leaders of this. And they, they've won Nobel prizes and Turing prizes and 
all this kind of thing. Um, they've revolutionized the world, really. And there's others beyond these. I mean, Jan LeCurn, Jeffrey Hinton, Yashua Bengio, and um, Andrew Neng are really the four the four guys that have done a tremendous amount in this in this area. So deep learning is just neural networks. It's neural networks, but now there's there's new things that have been bolted onto them like attention. Attention is huge. There's a pivotal paper, attention is all you need. Jeffrey Hinton's paper that talked about how to train deep neural deep neural networks, various various techniques that he introduced then the transformers, which came about with attention is all you need. All these kind of things have just really revolutionized it. It's a very different way of programming now. Uh, traditional software development, we would get the input data, we would write program code, the computer would run it, and then we'd see the output. These days, machine learning programming, you have the input data, you have the output data, you throw that into the computer, and heck, these days you even have ChatGPT show you how to throw that into the computer, and then the model becomes your program code. These are the different types of deep neural network technology that we're going to deal with. Computer vision is huge. Neural networks are quite good at this. They've revolutionized this area. There's so much stuff that you learned about computer vision, different encodings before we had neural networks and just taking this all over before convolution neural networks and all that is obsolete. Now you just use the convolution neural networks for everything. Tabular data is a lot of what you'd use classic stats for that sort of thing. Um, data that fits into tab tables really, really well. Natural language processing, thanks to embeddings and generative AI in general, this has really become a, a strong point for neural networks. Reinforcement learning teaches game type things, time series, also generally really applies well to neural networks. And I even put this one last because I've, I created this several years ago. I mean, probably five years ago. Well, longer than that, actually, because I've been teaching this course for about eight years now. But generative AI, I, I used to always say, oh, this is this weird, it generates these ghostly kind of images and other things, but good grief, this has now taken the world by storm. If you would have asked me five years ago, Jeff, are you going to do a course in generative AI? I would I would say no way. It doesn't, it's got some uses. So I, I admit, I did not see the revolution coming until I saw GPT, some of the early versions of GPT, and I'm like, okay, and Bert, this is going to change. This is going to change everything. And it is still in the process of changing everything. A lot of models before neural networks, you would choose regression if you're going to predict a number, classification, if you're predicting what class something is, is in. But neural networks, you can do, you can also have the input and output however you want to. You can have the input be images, uh, text, all sorts of things. The output Output can be images, text, whatever. It's they're very, very flexible in that regard. These are some of the other model types which you which you might use in the Kaggle competition because there will be some tabular data as well as image data in in there. I honestly have not created the data yet for this semester. This is all of, of that. And Python, this has very much become the programming language for machine learning and just about everything else. Python is now the number one used programming language. That is amazing, uh, partly just due to machine learning and and other other things. I give you some code here. You can check your Python installation. And that that's it. That's the basic introduction to this course. Definitely follow along. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you see whenever I post new data to this. I'm always updating this course as the technology moves forward. In between each semester, I'm always fixing all the breaking changes from stuff that has changed in all of these libraries that we're making use of.